Hey, it's great to have all of you with us today from all of our live churches, our open network churches, our family all over the world at Church Online. We're in a message series that's called Traveling Light. What do we know? We know that this world is not our home. We are created for more. The problem is, as we travel through this life, we often accumulate so much stuff that weighs us down, holds us back, and ultimately doesn't matter. Today, I've got good news for you. We've got a very important topic to let go of something that is destructive. And today, I'm going to have a little bit of help. I'm going to team teach with your campus pastor. So I'm going to introduce the big theme, and then you're going to help me welcome your pastor. To introduce our theme for today, I want to give you a couple of verses from the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 14 and 15 very important verses. The author to the Hebrews says this. We are to make every effort. Everybody say every effort. We're to make every effort to live at peace with everyone. How many of you would say honestly that you've noticed some people take a little more effort to live at peace with than others? I know I have those people in my life. Scripture says make every effort to live at peace with everyone and to be holy Scripture says, see to it that no one falls short of the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. In fact, I'm convinced that one of our spiritual enemy's greatest tools to destroy relationships and poison hearts is what the Bible calls a root of bitterness. What do we know? We want to know that our God wants us to love, but our enemy wants to kill love and intimacy in relationships. We know that God wants us to grow in trust, but our enemy wants to steal trust and leave us bitter. In fact, I believe that our enemy will do everything possible to plant a seed of offense in the hearts of people that will grow up into a root of bitterness. Let me say it again. I believe that our spiritual enemy wants to plant small little seeds of offense that will grow up and mature into a root of bitterness. It could be something really, really small, like you have a friend on Instagram and you always like her post and you always comment on her post. And then one day you realize she hasn't been liking yours and she hasn't been commenting on yours and you're learning what's in, why she doesn't like them and why she doesn't comment. And then you look and you realize that she has unfollowed you, a seed of offense that leads to a root of bitterness, something small. You text your friend, and your friend doesn't text back. And you saw when your text went through that bubbles actually started, and then the bubbles went away. And a little seed of offense grows into a root of bitterness. It could be the Christmas meal, and every year the same person doesn't bring any food, but always brings Tupperware and takes a full meal home, a seed of offense that grows into a root of bitterness. It could be something real and more significant. Someone that you love lies to you, deceives you, or talks bad about you. A seed of offense that grows into a root of bitterness. It's the relative that's always critical of you. Everything you do, the way you raise your kids, the way you spend money, even where you worship, you go to that church and worship like that, and you just get so sick and tired of the criticism. It could be the person that takes advantage of you, misleads you, or betrays you, and you realize there is a seed of offense that's growing into a root of bitterness. Let me give you our key thought for today, and then I'm going to hand this over to your local campus pastor. The big thought for the day we need to recognize is this. You can't control what people do, but you can control how you respond. You can't control what they think about you, what they say about you, what they do to you. But the good news is, with God's help and by his power, you can control how you respond. I hope you'll respond with passion. Would you please help me welcome your campus pastor?
Thank you. Thanks a ton. Uh, man, it always is a pleasure and an honor really to get to share my heart with, with, with our campus uh, right here at Life Church Stillwater. I love being able to serve under Craig's leadership, and, and it's been an honor to do that for 12 years now, all 12 of those years right here at Life Church Stillwater. So a uh, big, big uh, deal to us to get to call Stillwater home, and I feel kind of like the most blessed guy in the room, not only because I get to do all that, but because I get to have this crew along with me as I, as I get to help lead our church. Um, and uh, Sarah and I have been married now 12 and a half years, and uh, yeah, which is fun. That's pretty fun. We can clap for that. That's okay. Um, and then we've got four kiddos. You can see to your left is Griffin. He is our nine-year-old in fourth grade. On your right there is Breck. He is in second grade. Our princess is right there on Sarah's lap. That is Blair. And then our uh, fourth and our, our youngest boy is Cohen. He's 16 months old, and, um, and man, I love, uh, Sarah and I both, we love getting to do ministry and, and getting to be a part of this family and lead uh, what God does through them and, and through many of our stories here in Stillwater. And, uh, you know, if you're like me and you got kids or you once were a kid, uh, then Christmas is a lot of fun, and it's even bigger because of, of these guys. It makes Christmas so much more fun. And really, that's it's true for whatever emotion we're in, that the holidays and Christmas kind of tends to magnify our emotions. If, it's, if you've got kiddos and it's, it's exciting and you're fun and you're in a good space in life, then Christmas is even more fun. It's even more amazing. Uh, it's even more joyful. But if you're in a tougher spot and maybe you're going through some harder things, then sometimes Christmas and this season can even make it a little tougher. It tends to magnify whatever emotions um, that we currently have. And, and I think it's no accident that God would have us talking about this, this topic, letting go of bitterness right around this Christmas season. Because most of us in the next few weeks will spend some time with our friends and family, the people who mean more to us than anyone. And I believe we'll have the God-given opportunity to share his love and his light into uh, their lives, as we gather on the table, as we spend time open in presence, as we remember and reminisce together. But you can be sure that even though that's a God-given opportunity, our enemy wants to use those moments to plant a seed, a small seed of bitterness. He wants to use those moments to put a pain or a hurt into your life and your story. And remember what Craig said earlier, you can't control what people do but you can control how you respond. And we're talking about letting go of bitterness. We're letting go of bitterness during this holiday season. We're letting go of it because there's problems with it, right? There's obvious problems with bitterness. If you're taking notes, the first problem with bitterness we're going to talk about today is this. Bitterness has a dangerous root. Write that down. Bitterness has a dangerous root. Hebrews 12, 15 says this. It says, See to it that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble. Make sure, Paul's saying to the church in Ephesus, that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble. What do we know about roots? Well, we know that roots grow underground. And many times they start with a single seed that then grows, uh, you know, a, a main root and then branches out. Gr roots grow underneath the surface. And bitterness is the same way. Bitterness is something that doesn't grow on the outside. It starts as a root on the inside. It's an underground job. And, you know, many of us, maybe you've even experienced a hurt or pain or an offense, something small. And, and you're thinking, you know what, I haven't even realized it yet, but that little offense, that small seed is beginning to take root in my spirit, in my soul. It's beginning to manifest itself. As bitterness. And one of the keys to letting go of bitterness is identifying it in our lives. And this can be really tough. It's tough to identify uh, bitterness. And I had a friend who helped me with this a little while back. Uh, I, I am a, a big sports fan. I love the Cowboys, the Royals, the Chiefs in that order. And then pretty much everything else kind of comes uh, right alongside it. But if there is a sport to be played, somebody's taking score, there's a clock that's running, I'm in. I'm excited about it. And, and I, um, I fell in love with, with golf. Uh, many years ago when I was in college and probably a long time, along the time that many of you may have as well. 
Tiger Woods is the one who really hooked me deep into golf. And um, just watching him dominate a sport that had never been dominated like that before was, you know, was, was, you know, pretty awesome. And it really had me there. And I'm pretty embarrassed to say this, but as he was in the midst of his domination of that sport, he, he wrecked the car. And then we found out more about his infidelities, and we found out about some things that maybe he'd taken performance-enhancing drugs. And, and again, it, it just is kind of silly. But I became bitter at Tiger. I became bitter at Tiger. When he would um, show up on Sports Center. I just would have this emotion that would kind of well up in me. And, I mean, it's, it's again, it's embarrassing to say it. Uh, but I found myself, if you're talking about golf, kind of going, oh, yeah, golf. Yeah, well, whatever. You know, I'd show up on Sports Center, and I'm, I'm like, man, I hope this guy never wins again. I don't want him to win ever again. And, and again, even saying it now, I'm thinking, what, what was I thinking, you know? But I had a friend of mine. We were in the middle of a conversation about sports. Golf came up. Tiger came up. And I kind of got all bristly like that and everything. And, and he said, hey, you know, I think you may be a little bit bitter at Tiger Woods. And I was like, maybe, you know? <laughs> And he goes, let me just help you with something. If you are bitter at Tiger, he doesn't care <laughs> that you are. <laughs> I found myself going, well, if Tiger doesn't care, then why do I care? You know? Uh, and, and man, it just had crept in. And it crept in as a point where I'd become bitter over something that I couldn't control. And, and it's hard, though, to identify it many times. But if we don't, then we're not aware of that thing that has been, uh, I mean, growing in our hearts and in our lives. Think of it this way. Uh, maybe you're working out in um, the yard, or maybe you're working on a project, and you get a splinter in your finger. And once you realize that that splinter is there, you know, I've got a little pain that hurts, and I'm going to have to get it out. That's not going to feel good either. But if I don't, if I let it stay in my finger, then the pain is actually going to be increased. And, and maybe even become infected, and now I've got to take antibiotics for it. And if I let it go long enough, I could lose my finger because of one small splinter. Now, that sounds absurd. All of us in here are like, we would never let this, a small splinter take our entire finger. And it makes so much sense in our bodies. And yet so often, that's exactly what we do in our souls. We allow a small seed of bitterness to take a deep root. And, and though the pain of removing it wouldn't be easy, we allow it to remain. And it sets up in our heart. Bitterness produces a dangerous root. He hurt me. She misled me. He lied to me. She let me down. They said something to me. It, something was, was done to me. Everything was perfect. It was good, and then, and then that moment happened, and there's pain, and there's a mark that's been left, and I've got the opportunity to allow that pain to grow into a root of bitterness, and here's one thing about bitterness we know, bitterness keeps detailed records of wrong. How many times have you heard or maybe even said to yourself, well, I won't forget that? I'm going to make sure and remember this. Bitterness keeps detailed records of wrongs. But what we know about love in 1 Corinthians 13 is that it actually keeps no records of wrong. Bitterness does. Love doesn't. And here's the thing. The longer that you allow a root to grow, the longer you allow it to become healthy and really set up in your souls, the bigger it is, the more that it spreads, and the harder it is to kill harder it is to kill. We know that bitterness has a dangerous root. Secondly, if you're taking notes, write this down. Bitterness produces a poisonous fruit. It doesn't just have a dangerous root. It produces a poisonous fruit. Hebrews 12, 15, it says, see to it that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. There's, there's an impact that that root has because it produces a poisonous fruit. And you've seen it. You've seen it. A bitter, poison, a bitter person can poison a life group. A bitter person creates tension in any room. A bitter person can make a workplace miserable. You've been there. When they walk in, all of a sudden, the whole temperature of the room changes because the bitter person walks in. A bitter person can divide a family. Bitterness 
produces a poisonous fruit. Now, some of you are thinking, oh, good, I'm glad I came to the 1130 service because I know so-and-so who needs to be here at the 4 and 530, and Kelsey, I'm going to invite them. I'm going to make sure they're here today because they need this message. They're pretty bitter. Uh, or I'll say, invite them tomorrow to Monday night. But let me remind you, before you kind of put this sermon on the shelf and tell it for somebody else, don't let it really apply to me, let me remind you of my Tiger Woods story. I became bitter at Tiger, but I wasn't even aware that I was bitter at this golfer until a friend of mine helped me to know that. Because bitterness may be the hardest sin to see in the mirror. Why is that? Many times we feel justified in it. I may be bitter, but, but it's because they did, dot, dot, dot. I wouldn't feel this way unless they had. And so it's hard for us to identify that bitterness in us. But what I would just ask you to do is take a moment and ask yourself honestly, do you have a root of bitterness? Is there an offense that you've allowed to grow unknowingly in your spirit? Is there a poisonous fruit of bitterness that's coming from your life, from your story, from who you are? Are you unknowingly allowing that to come out? Are you holding a grudge? Is there a hurt that you've been carrying? Maybe for you, it's, it's the guy at work who always kisses up. And then whenever he doesn't make the sale, you kind of go, yes. You know, you kind of celebrate his lack of victory. Or maybe it's your boss that just continues to overlook you. You do great, and they don't always give you the best project or the best client. You're going, hey, wait a second. What's the deal? Maybe it's a friend who you're always there for them. But then the one time you need them, man, they, they're nowhere to be found. Maybe it's somebody who cut you off in traffic on Tuesday, and you're thinking about it right now, and you're saying, that's the thing. I'm, I'm holding on to. I've allowed this seed, this offense to get in my root, to get in my, my heart and my spirit, and allow a root of bitterness to be created. We know that the root is dangerous. We know that the fruit of bitterness is poisonous. Now, we are going to kill it. We're going to kill the root of bitterness, but how do we do that? Well, let's go back to the Bible, Ephesians Chapter 4, verse 31 and 32. This is Paul speaking to the church of Ephesus, and I believe speaking to us today. He says, get rid of all bitterness. Say it with me. Get rid of all bitterness. Come on, y'all slept in. You had your coffee. You're awake. Okay. Come on, say it with me. Get rid of all bitterness. There you go. Rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. And then what's he tell us to do? Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. So how do we kill bitterness? Number one, we kill bitterness with compassion. We kill bitterness with compassion. Paul taught a similar principle in Romans 12, 21, when he said, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And he says, hey, we've got to overcome evil with good. And here's the thing that I think it's, it's important for us to recognize. You may have been hurt. You may have been wronged by somebody. I don't doubt that. But the age-old saying is still true, that hurt people hurt people. Hurt people hurt people. And we, as followers of Christ, have the opportunity to kill bitterness with compassion instead of the insatiable desire for revenge, for justice. We're holding on to it. But we're saying, no, 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 we're not going to allow the seed of hurt to form into a root of bitterness. We're going to have compassion, knowing that hurt people hurt people. And Paul uh, reminds us, again, there in Ephesians 4.32, be kind and compassionate to one another. We cannot control what people do. We can control how we respond. And Jesus said it best. He said in Luke 6.28, Bless those who curse you and pray for those who mistreat you. Those are in red. That's Jesus' words right there, okay? Those are his words to us. Bless those who curse you and pray for those who mistreat you. One of the best ways to show compassion is to pray for that person who hurt you. I know that that's not easy. I know that that sounds counterintuitive, but it's something we can actively do. It's something that we can do is pray for them. Pray that God would be with them. Pray that God would be near them. Pray if they're hurting that he would help them 
be relieved of that hurt and that pain. And I love what Pastor Craig said years ago. He said, your prayers may or may not change them, but they will always change you. Your prayer for that person who's hurt you may not change them, but it will change you. We're killing bitterness with compassion. We're praying for those that have hurt us. And, and this is not easy. Write this down. We're going to kill bitterness with forgiveness. We're going to kill bitterness with forgiveness. And this is where it can get very difficult. Because you may be looking at me and saying, you don't have any idea what they've done to me. Cody, you don't understand what I've been through. You don't know what it's like. And you're right. I don't. And I'm sorry that you've been through some of the things that you've been through. What I do know is that God calls us to forgive. Great. How can I forgive the unforgettable, Cody? Forgivable. How, what, what can I do to that, that person that's, that's hurt me so much? Paul tells us right here in Ephesians chapter 4, 31 and 32. Get rid of all bitterness. We read that. Be kind and compassionate to one another. And then the last part, these are our instructions. Forgive each other just as in Christ God forgave you. Forgive as Jesus forgave you. So how did Jesus forgive you? Let me remind you, if you're a follower of Christ, you are fully, freely, and forever forgiven. You were made new because of what Jesus did for you. Before you sinned, he knew your name and he knew your sins while he hung on the cross and he forgave you anyway. He knew you would sin and he still gave you, gave you gracious love and mercy. He, he forgave you in an amazing abundance. That's how God forgave you. That's how Jesus forgave you and that's what he's calling us to do, to forgive just like Jesus forgave. And I know this is tough because I've experienced it in my own life. My dad is my hero. I, man, I love him. He is the biggest servant that I know. And growing up, there was no bigger hero in my life than my dad. I grew up in Hinton, Oklahoma, small town that I still love uh, in a big, big way. And uh, my dad loved to serve. One of the places he served was, was on a board there in Hinton. And their goal as a board was really to help economically, you know, invest in our community and help our community thrive. Uh, and, and really give back to the community that meant so much to us. And, and that's what they did for years. Until uh, when I was in college, there was a group of people who um, made an accusation against that board, against the group of men that were on that board. It was a false accusation, but that led to a grand jury investigation by the state of Oklahoma and two indictments that my dad faced. An indictment of conspiracy and embezzlement. And my hero... For three years, went through pre-trial stuff and went through all these, these things that we knew were not true. I know who my dad is. I know how he lives. I know that he's innocent. And for three years, this carried on. And before it even got to trial, still in pre-trial things, the state of Oklahoma found what we found, and that was that there was no evidence, that there was no basis for this, that, that they were, in fact, innocent. My dad was innocent. And, and so all along... These folks who had falsely accused my dad for three years were found innocent and not guilty. And we as a family and myself had opportunity to say, hey, he was innocent the whole time. I know who you are. I know who falsely accused my hero. And the state backed it up that it was false. And so I, I, I have the opportunity right then to be bitter, to be angry, to be justified in that. But I watched my earthly father model my heavenly father and forgive and let it go and not hold on to it and become bitter. I watched him model what says in Ephesians 4.31 to forgive just as Christ forgave you. And I had to let it go. I had to give it to God. I had to follow not only my dad's example, but 
My Heavenly Father is an example as well. Because bitterness is a choice. Bitterness is a choice. And you may say, no, it really it's not because I can't help what happened to me. I understand you can't help what happened to you. But if you choose not to let it go, then you're choosing to hold on to it. Because bitterness is a choice. We're in control. Bitterness is a choice. And, and here's the thing. We cannot, as followers of Christ, Christ, allow that root of bitterness to grow up and continue to be a poisonous fruit that hurts others because of what somebody did to us. In Philippians 2.5, we are called in our relationships with one another to have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Having the mind of Christ, he forgives us, and so we're called to forgive as he has forgiven you. Now, that's, that's, I'm not saying that's easy. That's hard. But here's the great thing. If you're freely forever and, and, and man, if we're in the future forgiven, like we talked about earlier, if you're forgiven by God and you know him as your Lord and Savior, then you also have the power of the Holy Spirit in you to forgive. You have the power because of what God has done for you and in you to say, hey, I can let this go. I'm not stuck by what this world has to say. I'm not stuck in a place where I have to find myself bitter and frustrated and hurt. I have the power in my spirit to forgive. Because not only am I called to it, I'm equipped to do it with the power of the Holy Spirit. We have that moment where we're hurt, where pain sits in, and where that glass is broken. In our lives. And we have the opportunity to hold it, to rehearse it, to relive it, to remember it, to grip it tightly, to even let it identify ourselves as something. And we have the power to release it. Because while we're holding it tightly, all we're doing is adding to the hurt. All we're doing is making that bitterness even worse. And the whole time, the power to let it go is in our hands. It's in our hands. I don't know your story. I don't know what you've been through. But could it be that you are here today to let go. That you've carried a hurt that's a seed of bitterness. And today God is calling you to let go, to forgive. Someone once said that to forgive is to set a prisoner free and then find out that the prisoner is me. I don't know where you're at, but maybe today as we let go, as we give it to God, as we forgive, as we show compassion, we understand that we're not held back by the bondage and the weight of bitterness any longer. We're not held captive to that which has hurt us. No, no, no. We're traveling light. We're setting it free. We understand the world is not our home. That we don't have to live for the approval of man. That it doesn't have to make sense to somebody else that I can forgive. But I am, I am letting go of bitterness. I'm cutting it and I'm killing it because God's not called me to a life that's wrapped up in the pains of my past. God has called me to a life of hope and future, a life of love, and a life of encouragement to others. Why? Because he forgave me. Because that's the life he's called me to. He's the life he lived. I can't control what people do. But I can control how I res will respond. And I respond by letting go of bitterness. And by traveling the light. Let's go back to Pastor Craig as he prays and wraps up today's message. So in all of our churches, let's close together in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for your work, for your power, for the movement of your spirit today that is working in the lives of so many people. And God, we ask that for those who or maybe carrying a grudge, who've let a seed of offense grow into a root of bitterness. God, I pray that your spirit would work and that you would bring healing by your power today. At all of our churches, as uh, you're in an attitude of prayer without looking around, 
Maybe some of you would say in a real honest moment, yeah, I didn't realize it, but I have been carrying an offense. Maybe I've got a little bit of bitterness against a, a child that's acting rather entitled. Maybe my spouse did something that let me down, and I'm carrying it and carrying it, holding it against them. It could be a relative that you're going to see in the upcoming days. It could be a friend, a coworker. It could be someone in your life group. Do not let your spiritual enemy turn a seed of offense into a root of bitterness. What do we know? We know that bitterness, it produces a poisonous root, and it produces a poisonous fruit. All of our churches, those who say, yes, honestly, I can recognize that there is something in my life that I need to let God deal with. And I'll tell you right now, in my own heart and in my own life today, I am taking something before God and asking for his healing. If you'd say, yes, Pastor Craig, would you just pray with me today and ask for God to bring a healing against a root of bitterness? Help me to forgive. Help me to let something go. Help me to release this as I've been forgiven, God. Help me forgive. If you'd say, yes, I want to let this go today. Help me heal, God. Would you lift up your hands right now? Just all of our different churches say, yes, God, I need your healing. As we've got so many people at churches around our nation and at church online saying, yes, I need help. Let's just pray for this. God, uh, we thank you, first of all, for your grace, for your forgiveness, for your mercy to us. And God, I know that it can be incredibly difficult to let go of an offense and to forgive an offender. So God, by your power and through your spirit, help us forgive others, God, as we have been forgiven. God, give us the power when we don't feel it emotionally to just begin letting go. And then God, lead us, prompt us to do everything within our power to live at peace with everyone. God, help us to make every effort to do our best to show honor to you by loving, showing compassion, and forgiving those who've hurt us. As you keep praying today at all of our different churches here, those of you, you may recognize in your own life that you carry a little bit of a weight. There may be some bitterness in your own heart, but it's not toward someone else. It may be toward something that you've done. You feel the weight of a past sin. You feel the guilt of how you've lived. It may be that you just feel guilty for the thoughts you have. No one else sees it, but you know who you are, and you wonder, where do I even stand with God? Well, the good news is I believe that you are not here today by accident, but our God, by his love and by his grace, brought you here to hear the good news about his grace through his son, Jesus. Who is Jesus? He is the sinless son of God, perfect in every single way. He is the one who is completely obedient to his father, even to death on the cross. The one who never ever sinned was perfect and shed his blood that our sins could be forgiven. If you feel the weight and the darkness and the heaviness because of your sin, what do you do? You simply take it to God today and admit, I've sinned, I've fallen short. I've done wrong, I've hurt people, I've had impure thoughts, I've been, I've been a bad person. And you invite God to forgive you through Jesus. How are you forgiven? You're not forgiven because you are good, you're forgiven because Jesus is good, because he's perfect. You're saved, not by your own righteousness, but by the grace of Jesus Christ through faith in the perfect living Son of God. And all of our churches, there are those of you that you realize if something happened to you, you don't know where you would spend eternity. You don't have the joy and the peace of knowing that you're forgiven, made new by God. You are here today because God brought you here. His spirit is reaching out to you. He's drawing you closer to himself. And all of our churches, those of you who say, yes, I need his grace. Yes, I need his forgiveness. When you call on his name, he will hear your prayer. He will forgive your sins and you will be brand new. All of our churches, those who say, yes, Jesus, I need your grace. Yes, I turn from my sins. Yes, I give my life to you. That's your prayer. Lift your hands high now. Right here, if that's you, put your hand in the air. Yep, right here, I got you. Welcome to God's family in the middle, in the back over there. I see you forgiven over here on this side too. Down front, I got you, buddy. Welcome to God's family. Who else? Yep, I need to know him. Yeah, I got you right here in the aisle. Proud of you. Forgiven right here. Who else? Yep, right here in the middle. I see you too. Welcome to God's family. Others of you. This is the moment I want to say yes to Jesus. I want to know him as my Lord and Savior. This is it. I'm stepping in right there in the back. I got you. God sees you. 
Who else? Who else? Well, God is at work in this room right now. And yep, I got you over here too. Welcome to God's family in the back. I see you. Congratulations. Who else? Who else? As many of you are saying yes to the Holy Spirit, saying yes to Jesus today, we want to pray with you as a family in support of the greatest decision you'll ever make. So with heads bowed and eyes closed, let's all pray together in one voice. Just repeat after me. Jesus, I need you because I've sinned and fallen short. And I believe that you died for me and you rose again to give me new life. So forgive me of my sins and make me brand new. I give you my life. Now lead every step as I follow you and share your love with this hurting world. Thank you for loving me and saving me today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Come on, Life Church to Water. Man, that is good. Come see. Can we give it up for Cody Challoner, our seat, our campus pastor? We're just so thankful for him and the wisdom that he shared with us today.